Hello, my name is Mr. Spammel and today I'm doing a quick little video talking about some of the things I do to make Unturned look really, really cinematic. A lot of you enjoy my cinematics, so I thought I'd make this quick little thing giving you tips on how to maximize Unturned's graphics. There's a lot of stuff in this video that you probably don't expect and it goes the complete opposite to what you might think, so make sure to stay tuned to the very end. You guys have been absolutely loving the videos lately, I really appreciate the support. Obviously we reached 16,000 not too long ago. It's absolutely incredible. Thank you everyone so much. And if you're not already subscribed, I would really, really appreciate if you hit that subscribe button, hit that bell button, and let's go ahead and get started. I'm only recording this video because a fair few people asked me, and for once, I'm on PEI. I'm not really sure why I chose PEI for this. How cinematic your game looks and how good your game looks depends a lot on the map. As a general rule of thumb, official maps look the best, uh, but there are modded maps which look a little better. It depends, but... Quite a lot of modded maps tend to look a bit more bland than vanilla ones, but in general, try and stick to official maps, there's a lot of weird looking mod ones. First off, I'm going to quickly cover settings. Now the obvious thing to do would just be to crank everything as high as it can go, although I don't actually recommend that. There's actually some settings in here that the higher you put them, the worse they look. Landmarks for example, sure is one that looks better the higher you have it, but I just stick it at medium because you can't really tell the difference too much unless you're really high up. I have ragdolls, debris, clouds, everything on except film grain. Now you might think that film grain is cinematic, although I absolutely hate it. Not only is it going to look bad and it's all spotty and it's just disgusting and distracting, but YouTube really struggles to compress that in a video because it's loads of moving little dots. In fact, you can probably barely even see it on YouTube. So please turn it off. I absolutely hate film grain. Uh, Bloom is one that I like to keep on though because it allows certain things to pop like car headlights at night. Look really, really nice with Bloom. So keep Bloom on, film grain off. Some other things that people get shocked by, skybox reflection and chromatic aberration. Don't have skybox reflection on. You can if you want, but basically because the clouds are always pretty much the same color, the sky is always like this washed out gray. Uh, it ends up taking away some of the colors. Just turn it off. It allows the colors to pop a little more. And chromatic aberration isn't a good thing. A lot of games tend to add this as a setting. I don't know why. It's a bad thing on lenses. It doesn't look good. You're effectively bringing things from cameras that people don't like and people trying to get rid of on lenses. I don't like it whatsoever. Unless you're in some like radiation zone or doing a horror, maybe then you'd want some chromatic aberration. But in general, it's best to edit in that stuff after the fact. I covered a lot of these settings to maximize your FPS in the video in the description below. So if you're interested in just purely getting more FPS, this is definitely not the video for you. I like to have my anti-aliasing on TAA and you can kind of copy most of these settings. One that I always leave low, no matter what I'm doing, is grass density. You might just think ultra, because you know, more grass, it's realistic, whatever. Um, but it gets a bit in the way and it's quite distracting. I don't know why you need that much grass versus this much grass. I tend to just leave it on medium all the time. Sun shafts is a setting that obviously it depends. I like to have it on sometimes, but there's a lot of times where I don't like sun shafts. As a general rule of thumb, I turn it off though. I'm not a massive fan. They do look quite nice, but most of the time it's not really worth it. Lighting quality you want to have as high as possible. Reflection quality, this is where we get a little bit more interesting. Not only do puddles kill your frame rate when they normally appear, but with reflection quality really high, your frames are just gonna, you know, they're gonna run off. They're gonna hop over the hill, they're gonna go to your nan's house. Water quality obviously looks best on ultra, and if you want to get extra spicy, ultra reflections as well. Um, obviously this murders your frame rate. I wouldn't recommend this for a lot of cases, but it does look good. I'm not going to deny it. Although on, for example, Unturned Life, my frame rate is quite low because of all the buildings. So I had to turn off water quality and uh, reflections. But when I can have the setting, it goes a long way. Pretty much all the rest of these settings you can leave. Terrain quality doesn't really matter. Like you can probably barely see the difference uh, even in the background there. All right, now we've touched on settings real quick. Most of that stuff's quite obvious, um, apart from film grain and chromatic aberration maybe. But the settings that I really recommend that's gonna make the biggest difference is field of view. When I'm doing my cinematics, no matter what they are, I pretty much always, like 95% of the time, have my field of view like this. And obviously in gameplay, this is horrible, and that's why it kind of goes against what you might think. But because of how zoomed in it is, you get basically no distortion. This is it with that really punched in field of view. And this is the same shot, 
with the normal really wide field of view and obviously you're thinking well I'll just bring the camera closer and you'll notice we get uh, this uh, <laughs> I look very very distorted this is not what you want whatsoever if you're trying to make something look good let alone cinematic because it effectively limits you to being like this far away uh, the only time it's good to go really wide with your field of view is if you're doing like maybe a shot in the entire world or you have to cram inside a really small room. Basically you always want to be really really punched in. The amount of people I see using spectator cam without using smooth cam is insane. Just please do shift F5, this is it. Without shift F5 trying to do my smooth shots it looks horrible. Let's just do shift F5. And then all of a sudden you've got these really smooth cinematic shots. Some of the more obvious tips I want to touch on. Always disable HUD. That's the home key for those of you that don't know. And always record at a high frame rate. Probably one of the most important tips for making the game look as cinematic as possible. Lighting. You'd be surprised how big a difference this can make. There are people in films that are dedicated to nothing but lighting. For example, it's generally good to have quite directional lighting like um, you don't want top-down lighting at least when you do slash day you get these nice long shadows this looks quite nice this is how I do most things really this directly overhead all of a sudden uh, there's like basically no shadows another tip for maximizing your cinematics is shift f4 in spectator cam which for those of you who don't know if I just do it real quick it effectively locks the camera to my character in the center and in combination with shift f5 to smooth out the movement gives you these incredibly good shots there we go that right there perfect cinematic i tend to normally pan left and forward or right and forward or, or back and right uh, don't just do like a circular pan because that's a little boring obviously it's best to kind of do your own experimenting uh, what I like might be slightly different to what you like. Um, obviously, if you want to have chromatic aberration and all of that, you can do, but please don't have film grain. I have a bit of a personal gripe about film grain. I just, I really don't like it. Hopefully, this helps you make your own cinematics. Uh, a few of you have been making your own little cinematics and movies, and I really enjoy seeing them. So if you make any cinematics and these tips are helpful, please just DM me them on Discord. You know, I, I love watching the stuff you guys create. Uh, it's really, really entertaining, and it's always, it always brightens up my day. And if you're not already subscribed, I'd really appreciate if you hit that subscribe button, hit that bell button, and I'll see you in the next video.